Nitiyanam guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today's episode, I wanted to share a click and understanding I had about um, how the My Matrix is actually not at all helpful and um, allowing you to move towards the, you experiencing your pure consciousness. Um, so I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. So actually, um, it happened, I, I think, a month back or something like that. Um, I was being driven around and suddenly uh, the, the person who was driving me parked me in front of a picture of a hamburger. And I was looking at the hamburger and I was like, I remembered something that Swamiji said uh, in the past. He was saying that even when he sees somebody killing an animal or even meat, he does not even look. And I was wondering, why would Swamiji say that? Why would Swamiji, he would not even look? There's a famous a general understanding, I would say, I, I don't know where it comes from, but a general understanding, of like if you're beyond it, then it should not affect you. So you know, people will use this argument to justify why even if you see meat, you should be looking at meat, whatever. And then Swamiji was saying, no, he does not look, he turns around. Um, then I thought, well, definitely it is also to give a message to us, right? Because we need to realize that this lifestyle is not right. So if he becomes, if he remains untouched by it, then we might miss the point and we might feel that it's okay to continue to cherish this lifestyle, which is not for various reasons, basically uh, being nonviolent. And so I was sitting in, in the car in front of that hamburger and I was looking at the hamburger and I was like, oh my God, see how this hamburger is engaging my senses, the color, the drawing, the design and everything. It's all there to kind of grasp your attention and to send a certain message. And I was like, definitely the message that it is trying to send is not at all aligned to what I want to live. And so I was looking in and seeing like, what is going on? And this process lasted for approximately 30 minutes. And I was intensely looking in and seeking into that. And I realized one thing. So as she was saying, Enlightenment is a space of vulnerability and powerfulness. He was saying when he got it, uh, when he received enlightenment, he was said, he said, I was so vulnerable, but so powerful. So normally we associate vulnerability to powerlessness, but he's saying no. Enlightenment is a space of vulnerability and powerfulness. So I thought when you're vulnerable, you're highly sensitive. And I realized it's very important to be sensitive because only when you're sensitive, you can grasp the more subtle dimensions of your existence. So being sensitive is very important to um, experience you as pure consciousness. And when you are in front of something like a hamburger, an environment which is not supporting your consciousness, the only way I could look at this hamburger and not be affected was by consciously deciding to become insensitive to that, to desensitize myself to that image. But I'm saying if I'm in an environment which is not helping me to align to the nonviolent superconscious experience, then being in an, I, I cannot remain sensitive in that environment because that environment is constantly sending me messages which are not aligned to my purpose. So I was like being in an environment which is not supporting your purpose, for example, you know, all this kind of marketing or visuals or sounds relating to all kinds of lust whether it's sensual pleasure, food, sleep, um, everything when it comes to non-violent uh, eating, non-veg, meat, and uh, so many things are constantly there in our surroundings which are totally against our enlightenment. It's really against it. And in that environment, I cannot remain sensitive. If I decide to be insensitive and live in that environment, I might not be affected by that environment, but I definitely won't be able to grasp the subtle dimensions of my existence because I'm insensitive. And in that insensitivity, my frequencies are, are restricted. If I'm in an environment which supports my conscious growth, which means there's nothing around me which is going against my decision to become nonviolent and to realize me as pure consciousness, then I can allow myself to be vulnerable and sensitive. And by doing that, I, my, the, the range of frequencies that I become aware of is so much broader and it allows me to experience the more subtle dimensions of my existence. 
And that is why building Kailasha, enlightened ecosystem, reviving Sanatana Hindu Dharma is so important because that enlightened ecosystem, enlightenment ecosystem, is an ecosystem which is constantly supporting your enlightenment. It's an ecosystem where you do not have to fear to become vulnerable so you can explore the different dimensions of you that normally you cannot explore in a hostile environment. So that was a very powerful click uh, that I had about that time. So I wanted to share that with you guys. And uh, so it's so important to be in the right environment. And that is why supporting, uh, you know, being part of Swamji's mission is a blessing because the purpose of the mission is to create and to revive this enlightenment ecosystem, which we have lost and to step out of what we know as the Maya matrix, which is only going to support, um, you know, our frustration, um, our different forms of lust, and the violence that is kind of just there considered as normal and it's okay to be violent that's life which is not actually so i wanted to share that with you guys and i just wanted to add also that actually that my matrix is constantly fueling on you lower energies and uh and it's 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 pushing you to action with that low energy thought currents low frequency thought currents as fuel and that is very dangerous you have to become active from the paramashiva space because you're inspired by the high frequency thought currents you should not move into action because you are moved by low frequency thought currents if you're moving into action because you have a desire um, to uh, some form of desire for pleasure or something then that is not the right fuel and, and that will damage you in the long run. And there's no way you'll be able to experience your consciousness if you keep running with the cheap fuel. So yes, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Again, thanking you for your support who are watching this, supporting this channel to grow and to share this, um, these experiences and clicks that I've been having while being with Swamiji and being a disciple of Swamiji. And, um, and yeah, so subscribe, leave a comment if you feel uh, it helped you or if you have a question or anything, uh, like the video also to increase the activism. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Nityanandam. I welcome you all with my love and respect. Let you all open all your three eyes. Om Nityananda.